All right, I'm making this video for the Crooked Moon campaign on legendary mode because I haven't seen any other videos uh, for the Crooked Moon campaign, in particular legendary mode. And this is a like a noob friendly way to help you get through the very first few turns because I found the very first few turns for this campaign to be extremely challenging uh, because of different factors such as you're fighting dwarves and you only have goblins and if you're watching this video you probably already know that green skins have uh, or at least goblins have really bad leadership so you cannot go with the uh, typical center to center army fighting you know front to f uh, front line to front line fighting it's not going to work for goblins the dwarves are going to beat you every time so this is a strategy that I found to be to work pretty well against the uh, first dwarves that you fight From your which are Karak Norn right, so here we go uh, way to play hero action costs 50% less so it's half the cost and you get double the experience so you want to try to use your uh, your heroes as much as you can when you play with crooked moon upkeep and recruitment costs for minus 40% for goblin units this is good because it means you can uh, get a lot of goblins for and the goblins are already cheap right so you could get a huge armies but they're all gonna be fairly weak unless you use uh, strategy to fight with them so here we go I'm gonna upgrade first thing I'm gonna do is upgrade the musta fields into brawling grounds I want to get nasty skulkers and goblin archers on this building I am going to uh, build a wolf den so the thing is right this pr uh, this settlement Karak Asgaraz is not the capital of this province it's the Karak Norn, which is over here is the capital. And from playing legendary mode, uh, it's at least with greenskins and dwarves, uh, I haven't played with Empire or Vamp. I have played with vampires, but I haven't completed the um, campaign with vampires. And I just haven't played at all with Empire. But with dwarves and greenskins, I can safely say that taking a, pr a settlement that is not the capital makes it extremely diff difficult to hold on to because as you know um, you're going to get you're going to get uh, rebellions and revolts on uh, on legendary and when you get a revolting army if it's not the capital they're just going to attack the uh, settlement take it or sack it whatever it may be but you have no time the point is that you have no time to go back and help it whereas if you have the capital of the um, of the province the revolting army will always appear at at the capital of the revolting province and it will uh, it will have to siege the the fortress and that means when they siege it that means you have some extra time to send troops and uh, help to kill the the rebels so anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to be giving up Karak Asgaraz. Most likely, I'm going to be giving it up because I'm going to go full force into Karak Norn and try to take it. I'm going to move my uh, Goblin Big Boss because I'm just going to try to level him up. When they're with half the cost, you get double the experience. You want to just use them as much as you can, literally. It's really cheap. Uh, here, you get some Night Goblin Fanatics, which are... Uh, pretty good right and the squig squig hoppers which are really good and you get this arachnorok spider right so your typical you, the typical thing to do which what which uh, what i was trying to do was build goblins and try to fight the dwarven army traditionally uh you know have a front line have a center the meat and potatoes of the army go up against their center their meat and potatoes and like you know and and you know and butchers work ensues but what i found out is that you literally i literally lost every time so that strategy is out the window you can't do that with goblins 
uh, I'm gonna end turn here because I'm waiting for these buildings to build. So what I'm trying to say is that I am not going to build goblins. Uh, I am not going to try to get a center, you know, a meaty center with uh, tanky units to soak up damage. I'm not going to do that because that's not going to work against this dwarf army. Alright, so I'm going to try to do my first assassinate, try to level him up. Uh, okay, I got a success here, but you might not get a success. That doesn't matter. The, what matters is that you just keep trying to level up your dude. Personally, this is your choice, but I'm going to go with uh, this road down here. So my goblin big boss can help me out on the, on the map instead of helping me out in the army. Alright, so again, I'm not going to build anything yet. Alright, so here we go. Now I'm going to build, right? I have a big, uh, big options here. I'm going to go with some goblin archers right off the bat. Uh, goblin archers are uh, pretty good. They're not as great against dwarves, but it's what we're going to need to harass the dwarves. We're also going to use the goblin archers to break apart their army. You'll see what I mean. Uh, actually, these goblins, I'm just going to disband them because they're, honestly, they're just bad. And I'm not going to need them. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Th these two guys should be more than enough to be my front line. All right. Uh, did I... Can't block army 12%. No. Deploy hero. Alright. So the reason I have the army inside Karaz Az Azgaraz, Karak Azgaraz is because I want to uh, lower the def the prov the minus to obedience deficit so that I could hold this as long as I can before I have to let it go. Alright. Now I'm gonna build uh, three skulkers. These guys are uh, really good uh, against dwarves because they have they have armor piercing and they have this thing where they if they are winning the battle they actually like gain a bonus. Uh, I'm gonna assassinate again here. Wow, I got really lucky. You, I, I usually I did not get this lucky when the last times I tried to do this. But yeah, they have a they have a d damage bonus for whenever they uh, if they're winning the fight they gain. I think attack speed and armor piercing. Let me let me check that as soon as they're built. All right, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think this is it, right? Oh, opportunistic, opportunist murder. So yeah, they gain some melee attack and they gain armor piercing. Um, if they're winning, right? If you have to see the if recharge if winning melee combat. And they also put poison to the enemy. So these guys are really good against dwarves. Uh, what I love about them personally is the stalk. Um, the stalk ability. This makes it so that these guys can like get really close to the enemy without the enemy seeing them. Which means the computer will not react to them coming around uh, because they'll still be invisible. Okay, so uh, now... I'm actually going to get one more Skulker. I want to have four. Uh, two more Archers. Fifteen. And I'm going to have two. Alright. Yeah, so this, this will be fine. Alright. So yeah, I'm going to get uh, one Skulker, two more Archers. The Archers are important because they're going to be used to break apart the, army, uh, the, uh, the enemy army. Okay, can't do anything, I'm going to deploy. Alright, let's see. Alright, so two more, right? Two, three, plus three. Yeah, this is fine, okay. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to walk now. For forward. Leave Karaz as, as Garaz. Karak Asgaraz. It's going to revolt in a bit, but that's okay because I'm going to destroy the uh, the buildings I built in it because I'm going to be giving it up. Uh, I'm going to be giving it up, so I just want the gold back from the buildings I built, like these two buildings. I'm going to destroy them 
so just get the gold back. I'm planning on getting this first, Perak Noam. Uh, I'm not going to make a video to show the whole campaign. I don't know if people want to see that, but this is, in my opinion, from what I've tried so far, from what I've seen on legendary mode, is the best strategy to go about uh, starting the campaign. Alright, so I'm going to try to assassinate again. Alright, worked. Cool. Uh, slap that more. By the way, this whole thing, you could do whatever you want, but I, I find it, I wanted to use that Goblin Big Boss to help me on the map. My fightiness is low, so this is, this is also the cue to start moving forward. So next turn will be the last turn that I can build, uh, and build, uh, units, and then I'm going to destroy the buildings. Raid the car following. Oh, all right. I got lucky and got a mission to raid it, which I'm going to do anyway. I'm going to move as close to my border as I can. Build. So, I didn't mention this, but I got four skulkers, right? These I'm going to use to flank. They're very good. My archers are going to be used as my center, which is weird, but this is going to work because it's going to break apart their center. Um... Squig hoppers, I'm going to use these guys to probably get uh, onto some quarrelers and make and stop them from shooting. That's really key because, qu uh, not qu um oh yeah, quarrelers, right? The guys the crossbows. Yeah, and then the other guys are called thunderers. So you want to you want to get their missiles to stop shooting. You want to do that uh, because if their missiles are shooting, your your units get a leadership debuff. <laughs> and you can't afford that as goblins, right? You just you can't. Alright, deploy. Alright. Tribute. No, I'm not gonna get this, right? I don't wanna g give up gold to get four obedience, because I'm gonna be giving it up anyway, I'm g the, the settlement. Growth, whatever, so be it. It's a sad reality. We have to give it up. I'm selling both buildings and putting everything I've got to taking Karaknor. So here I'm at full full army. 20 out of 20. I want to move forward just a little bit. What is this? 56%? I don't know if I can make another step. So I'm going to start raiding. The reason you want to start raiding is so that your, your fightiness does not go under. You want to keep your fightiness up. If this is taken, you get a, like a attrition minus to your troops. Uh, I actually didn't read that. I think it was a failure. Right. right. What does this do? Oh, Vanguard deployment. That's okay. Infiltrator. All right, see, they're gonna come out and they're gonna try to fight me. They actually w went out and they wanna get an ambush on me. But that's okay because I'm... Raid, okay, mission successful, right? Nice, cool. The denizens are dangerously agitated. Yeah, I'm gonna lose Lord. this Soon revolt. They Thank you for telling me. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if I could find their army this way. Get going. No, no, that doesn't work. The poor hero modifies income minus uh, 15. Cannot activate. Uh, that's it. Nothing else happens. All right, no problem. I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep raiding because if I try to move all forward, I know the enemy army is somewhere here, so it's gonna ambush me, and that's no good. You want to have it so that well, uh, you want to have it so that they are attacking you. Okay, there you go. Uh, where can I see if balance of power? No. Where is it? Attacker and defender. Where does it show that? Wow. I completely forgot. All right. I think I'm going to be fighting this anyway, though. But you want to get them to attack you. That's what I'm uh, trying to get at. 
All right. Uh, we get a banner, which is uh, pretty good. Gives it attack, may uh, defense, and it call the unit causes fear, which to whoever's given it, whoever gets the banner. I'm gonna give it to my fanatics. Uh, cause they have spinning looms. Okay, here we go. So, they have four, or some, pardon, they have three quarrelers, uh, the, their missile, which means I have, what, one, one wolf, two wolves, and the squig hunter. So I'm going to try to get all three of those onto their quarrelers if I can. If I can't, it's okay. But I want to try to also get probably my squig hunter onto their grudge thrower uh, as a, as a green skin player you always have to make sure that their artillery is not shooting because if if especially dwarf artillery if they are free shooting um it just becomes a mess all right so i'm gonna use my archers as my front line what is it I had to pause the recording. All right, so here we go. Um, let me move these guys back a bit. So this is going to be my front line. It's just going to be my archers. That's it, uh, for the most part, right? It's very untraditional, you know. Instead of having the the meat and potatoes in the front or the so part in the center, you know, attacking their center, uh, that's not going to work for goblins. You're almost always going to lose that kind of fight so you cannot go with traditional uh, warfare All right, pardon I had to pause again uh, if you don't see uh, these guys the skulkers they have vanguard right so you could put them outside of your uh, deployment field however you might not be fighting this army on underway right so if you don't fight this army on underway use them to uh to flank around they are very great because they can uh get extremely close to the enemy like i'm talking about this close and they will still be hidden because they have the ability stalk and you kind of want to get them you want to flank with them sort of like our cavalry but without the speed right because they gain a, a damage boost when they're winning so they're very good uh so i have my front line here Okay, because this is underway, I get to, I guess this is a little cheese, but I get to put him in the back here, right? Uh, I'm also going to put my cavalry back here. With my cavalry, I want to get to that, to the, to the grudge thrower, get it out as, as fast as possible, and also get rid of the uh, dwarf archer missile units, which I believe that are the corollers. Yeah, corollers. They have one, two, three. That's good because I have three cavalry units. I should be able to take them out. I'm going to use the three wolf riders to harass. Make sure you have skirmish mode on. And that's my archers. Make sure you have skirmish mode on for those two. Um, the only thing I have left are my uh, leader and my Ragnarok spider. Them two together, they're actually really uh, powerful. Uh, when they're together, they very uh, tanky. I mean, I've obviously the Arachnorok spider, right? But I'm gonna have my night goblins in the sidelines here. I want these guys to eat up the middle of their um, of their flank. Like that's for certain. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start this now. I'm going to bring up my archers, wolf archers. I'm also going to move up my skulkers. I'm going to make them run because I want them uh, up, up in the front as fast as possible. Alright, so I'm going to get shot at by grudge throwers for a bit, but that's okay. I'm going to move up my archers just a bit and yeah here you want to keep them spread out right because 
the reason we don't have a a, a, a center a good center is because we're gonna use the archers to break apart their center because we're just we're never going to win a, a head-on battle against dwarves that's not going to happen okay so wolf All right, they they seem to be attacking me already. It's okay. I'm gonna uh, send off my. So right. They're just always so weak. Really are. Tell them to stop. So I can, uh, start auto shooting. Uh, I'm gonna tell my other guys to stop. Right. Okay, they're stopping. Whatever. Ridiculous how much, uh, how low leadership they have. All right. They already routed. Okay. All right, so my archers are gonna start pulling back now. And it looks like I've got their front. I mean, their back line taken care of. I'm gonna I'm gonna charge in with my Ragnarok spider and my hero. My hero, I'm gonna make him go after his hero with uh, like all my units except my spider. My spider, I want him going after some dwarves. Yeah. Send my cavalry in to attack their uh, quarrelers again. I I. Used, I managed my uh, my wolf archers really poorly, so when you do this, do not make sure you pay ten more attention to them. The spinning loons, that was a bad spin. These guys' leadership, the one of my night goblins is going low, I'm gonna have to use uh, Trixie traps to try to get them back up. I'll use it now. He's almost, he's like finished. Skulkers forward. He skulkers forward. You want to make sure that all your archers are constantly shooting. that my guys are shooting skulkers are coming in yeah skulkers from behind that's that's very deadly it's very good and these skulkers from back here their morale should drop uh, dramatically right now oh, make sure I'm gonna make sure that these corollars are finished with a battalion of wolves Go after these corollers and these skulkers. I just want them in the front lines. Alright, so as you see, I've kind of cornered them in this uh, uh, part of the map here, right? And I've just got my archers pepper them, peppering them with arrows. So, at this point, it's looking good for me. Right, it's looking good. And for a goblin army, this is what you want to do. I, uh... I'm actually going to use some smoke bombs. Because I think smoke, smoke bomb lowers vigor. Oh, it, no, it lowers speed and charge speed. Pardon me. Yeah, I'm going to get my squigs into, the, into their main force. Whereas my wolves, I want them on this hero. Alright, so far it's looking good. My night goblins that have the spinning runes are really low. I'm going to push them back because I just don't want to lose them. 
I just simply don't want to lose uh, them since they have the uh, the banner. All right, I'm pulling them back. Right, and so you see, because I have my okay, yeah, it's a victory. So because I had my archers peppering them constantly with arrows, they get a morale mo uh, minus. Well, they're routing right now, but they get a morale mo minus if they're getting shot at by arrows. So you saw my front line was nothing. It was basically my hero and my spider and these two night goblins, which thankfully one of them managed to live. But you want to try to uh, make their center focus, like zone in into one thing. If you can try to uh, break apart their army, that'd be great. And just have your uh, arrows like waste, just waste everything on them. Look, my... Uh, my archers are, this one's depleted, these guys are almost depleted, or at least like 75% of their ammunition has been used up. These guys at half, but you know, it also, you also take into account when they're running back, right? They're trying to run back from some warriors, so they are not shooting at that time. Whereas these guys, they're almost finished as well, looks like 75-80% of their ammo is used up. And skulkers, these guys are, is where it's at. They're the ones that, uh have probably made me win so yeah anyway uh i hope this helps anybody that's starting off a uh crooked moon campaign uh, this is this was what i found to be a really good strategy to starting off the campaign and just getting uh that first dwarf army you know getting rid of them so that you could attack karak norn and take the capital of the province and uh so this is the end result right uh just wanted to prove that this i'm going to slaughter for these guys right but i just wanted to prove that uh because i did pause the video just wanted to prove that it was uh still in legendary mode when i fought this battle uh, okay that's a lot of nonsense all right i unlocked some renowns uh where, where did i find that is it under i think it's under province i guess you could look right obedience difficulty level minus eight uh what else can i do and you could also i can't save see it won't let me uh save it's a legendary difficulty so that was the fight it was a, a very good victory but yeah uh so yeah hopefully this helps anybody uh starting the crooked moon campaign and i thank you for watching